possibility I am a promise With a capital P I am a great big bundle of potentiality And I am learning To hear God's voice And I am trying To make the right choice I am a promise to be Anything God wants me to be I can go anywhere that he wants me to go I can be anything that he wants me to be I can climb the high mountains, I can cross the white sea I am a great big promise, you see I am a promise, I am a possibility I am a promise, with a capital P I am a great big bundle of potentiality promise to be anything God wants me to be I have a promise to be anything God wants me to be Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you. My name is Nadine Carr. Praise and worship done by Brother Lennox Duncan. Prayer song. Prayer by Brother Tahim Reese. And then you have the praise team. Children's Story by Sister Helene Francis, a feature of the disability. Special music by Delano Douglas. Stewardship Focus by the Knight. Meditation Song, Deaf Church Choir. And then Pastor Barnaby will introduce the speaker for today. Amen. Thank you, sis. I'm sure that you would agree with me that since we've started this, imp this impossibility uh, campaign, this special uh, campaign for our, our possibilities ministries, that we would have been blessed. We want to join with our host in saying welcome to those who are watching online and YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you have chosen the right church, the right place to worship. Uh, this morning, we have a special preacher who has been preaching God's word since we've started last Sabbath. And I believe that today is no exception. We have been reminded night after night that the God that we serve is God of the impossible. And I believe that God has prepared his man servant, Dr. Sean Brooks. He has prepared him with another message. Dr. Sean Brooks presently serves in the Georgia Cumberland Conference there in Atlanta. And he has been doing a wonderful job here in the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church through this evangelistic series. We pray that the Lord will use him 
as he would have used them in the past, that he will use them in a very powerful way to bring to us another powerful message. And at the appropriate time, you will hear from this wonderful and powerful man of God. May I invite you to just fasten your seatbelts. One songwriter says, let's forget about ourselves. Let us concentrate on him and worship him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. everyone good morning everyone happy sabbath yes man happy sabbath everyone yes man make it so lively man not because a little bit away but you see anytime we worship don't matter what whenever you worship virgin when the praises go up the blessings come down and that's why we are here to do to do this morning and that is what we are going to do Come on, we're going to sing this hymn, What a Fellowship. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting love. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leading on the everlasting Come on. Oh, leading, leading, safe and secure. Can you tell me who is there? Who is there? Could you, can you tell me who is the everlasting arms that you are going to lean on? In brethren, Jesus, very good. And, and we are going to lean on him because he's the one who woke us up this morning. He's the one who are providing for us. In spite of this pandemic, he decides that he's not going to leave us nor forsake us. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears within my is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as he tarried there, no other has ever known. He speaks, and the sound of his voice, though the nights 
around me be falling and it makes me go to the voice of woe its voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy cross I will ever be true is shame and reproach gladly bear it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and save cross I will eat so despised by the world I want just attraction I see it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and send
Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for bringing us safe here. Lord, please help every person here and keep us that we be better as we share your word. And help us not know COVID will affect us, please. Lord, please protect us from COVID. Lord, please help everyone who is sick right now. Lord, please help our families. Lord, please protect all of us who don't have any food. Protect us throughout this day. Lord, please continue to be with us for the remaining of the day and keep us safe. Lord, thank you again for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Isn't it a wonderful time to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, at such a time as this. Today, it's not really a story 
These are some facts I will share with you about Possibilities Ministry. I hope that as I speak, you'll whisper a word of prayer because I will want to know that whatever I say today, it will really resonate with you. The mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is to proclaim the gospel to all people, this everlasting gospel, in the context of the three angels' message of Revelation 14, 6 to 12. The Possibilities Ministry, previously referred to as the Special Needs Ministry, aims to encourage inclusion. It means all persons are included in the gospel. It has not yet been fully realized, although we have been trying to get it across, but we are getting somewhere. And I'm sure this week you might have listened and learned a lot, and I'm sure that many of us will really change our attitudes towards those persons with possibilities. When I think of my dear brother over there playing the piano, he has autism, and he didn't go to school to learn this. He has a talent that he's using for the Lord. Amen? When I think about our dear brother Lennox, who just sang a while ago, isn't it a wonderful thing to know that this man is blind, yet he's seeing spiritually? So shouldn't we embrace these persons? I think we should. The goal, as I said, is not yet fully met. The church recognizes that there are great possibilities in many persons who have disabilities, hence the term possibilities ministry. There are many talents that persons have, but the persons who think they are whole, we are well, we are okay, we, are become, we have become blockers. What have we become? Blockers in their way. So we are preventing them from unearthing their talents. I pray that as we go through today and for the rest of our lives, we'll change our attitude towards these persons. When I think of my dear sister Nadine Carr, who I spoke to, and she became a host for the first time, and she has done very well. Amen? Today, I just want to give some tips on how to address persons with disability. I'm sure that many of you might have heard that persons who are mentally challenged on the street in Kingston, four of them, I think, were killed. And it hurts me so much to know that persons would really get up and just kill people for nothing because they probably think that they are useless. But I have news for them. All of us are level at the foot of the cross. No one is different. We are supposed to treat persons well. And those who have done all these heinous acts, they are accountable to the creator who created these people. I want you to remember these things that I will say just now. When you are talking to persons, you must recognize, you know, probably looking at them, that they have some challenge. For example, Persons you call handicap. And before I go so far, I must say, although some of these words that I will use today may be found in the Bible and other spiritual writings, their usages have evolved and they now carry negative connotations. And so you might say these words are in the Bible, but we have learned that it has brought negativity to these persons who have disability. So we are learning to really speak to them in a different way. The person you see not able to walk, don't call them handicap. What is a handicap? You don't look at a person and call them handicap. You must always remember the person is greater than the challenge. What did I say? When you are referring to persons, refer to the person with the challenge, not the challenge with the person. So you're going to say the person with the wheelchair. The person who is blind, you must not put the challenge before because God put them first. God created all persons equal and he did not create persons to feel less of a person. He did it because he wants us to learn from them. So this week, as we went through, 
you realize that we are the persons who need help. We need help badly because we are seeing these persons and God is speaking to us through them and we are not eating it. We will only be saved in God's kingdom when we get it right. If we continue to abuse these persons, we are going nowhere, church. And even very church that we are, people treat people badly because they are not able to walk, they are not able to talk, they may not be here, and we treat them badly. We need to stop it now. There are persons who are afflicted. They call it unfortunate and less fortunate. I think you can say it differently. And if you even say words that you might not know that you are saying the wrong thing, it's your mood, your facial expression, the way you do it, because you really might say a word and the person might not recognize that you even said it. But the way you said it, the manner in which you looked at them while you said it, they will realize that you really don't mean them any good. So I want you to understand, people who are deaf or hard of hearing, don't call them mute. We look at them and call them mute. We say they are retarded. These words are not words they should constantly be beating it in their heads. Can you imagine we can walk, we can talk, and we can hear? Can you imagine how they feel, how much effort they have to put into doing what they are doing? And they are doing it with all their might. Look at Delano. He plays, yet he'll get up and walk around the church. He's autistic, but God gave him a gift to share with us. And he's share, he has shared it so wonderfully last week and this week. And so we must appreciate these persons. So whenever you see Delano walking, don't feel that that's a madman. He's a special person. He's a person with great possibilities. And he has taught us so much. You have children who are on the street. And we look at them and we just pass them by. They are vulnerable children. Who are they? They are vulnerable children. And thank God our ministry has grown. And so we have many persons now who are able to be under an umbrella of a group of persons from the union, nine of us who have been manning these persons so you can know that the terms are different. These children may be vulnerable because they may not have a place to live. They may not have food to eat. So when you see them, don't spit at them. Don't throw, if you don't have any money to give them, just be, you know, polite and say, I don't have anything, but don't treat them badly. They could be your grandchildren. They can be people that will influence others to become Christians, because many of them still go to church. I want to say to you, persons get a stroke. You don't look at them and say, that's a stroke vic victim. Don't call people victims. You know, you look at a person with stroke, you say, that's a person who has a stroke. You don't look at them and say, they're the victim. When you do that, you're actually it's like you're driving a nail in their disability. Please stop it. If you're not aware of it, but I'm saying it to you today, don't call persons names. There are persons who are mentally, they have mental issues. They have delayed, you know, they cannot be quick enough to decipher things as quick as us. And so they have global delays, you know, and so we call it global developmental delay or hidden disability. These are persons who God has created. God created them. We didn't make them. And God must know what he did, why he created them like that. As I said before, they are here to teach us who say we are okay. And by the way, none of us know today what will, bring, what will come to us even a little few minutes from this. Just right here, you can get a stroke. I can tell you it happens. It happened to my husband, and he cannot walk, he cannot talk properly, and he was someone that was strong. Just one night, and that's it. Brethren, I'm appealing to you that we need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray that God will help us to take this everlasting gospel to persons out there who have challenges. Don't mock them. Don't let them feel that they are less of a person. And sometimes it's only when you have persons who have challenges, that's when you really recognize how people feel. Today, as we go, I pray that you'll give a smile to persons when you meet them. You know, don't bark at them. Don't treat them badly. Thank you very much.
Shall we praise the Lord again, everyone? Shall we praise the Lord? Could you give me a G on the piano, please? G, G. Um, have you ever been in situations where you feel like you want to give up? Well, this song is for you. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace of mind like you never know. How things change when you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for your You know what? You know what? You talk faith when you're up on the mountain. Talk is easy when life's at its best. Now it's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when your faith is really put to the test. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. The God in the good times The God of the day is still God in the night. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He made them right. The God in the good times is still God in the bad times the God of the day is still God in the night night yeah Happy Sabbath, everyone. At this time, I invite the deacons to stand in their places to receive the tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us this far into your holy Sabbath day, Lord. Lord, we ask that you help us to be good stewards to everyone around us, especially to those who have special needs. Help us even so to give, give back to you, Lord, the 10% that belongs to you, and help us as we do in your will. 
We ask of this in the most precious name of Jesus Christ, your holy begotten Son, and our Lord and Savior. Amen. I will now remind our online family of other ways in which you can return your tithes and offering. You can do so through direct deposit to the church's bank account displayed on the screen or online at give.centralja.org or through our mobile pickup service by calling the numbers displayed on the screen or any of our elders. Today, our focus is on stewardship of abilities. Each person has special abilities. Every talent can be used to glorify either the one who possesses it or God who gives it. Good stewards use their talent no, good stewards use their abilities to bring glory to God. From the parable of the talents found in Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30, we can learn the following lessons. One, we all have talents. That is the first truth Jesus wanted to impress upon his disciples. Two, we do not... We do not all have the same number of talents. Those who have several talents should never look down on others who have fewer talents. Three, faithful stewards of natural talents and spiritual gifts use them to glorify God and educate others. Four, some refuse to use their talents. Not using your talents is a serious business the worthless servant gets no second chance. He is, thrown, he is thrown into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And five, we should concentrate on the things we can do well and not worry about the things we cannot do. Today, as we give, let us remember that regardless of what abilities we have been given, Every steward is tested by the same standard, which is faithfulness. The quantity of our abilities is not the most important, but what we do with whatever we have been given is what really matters. <clears throat> Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now there herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be in room enough to receive it. Amen. Amen. What an awesome time we have been having since last week. What a joyous moment when the Possibility Ministry can come together to share in the God of the impossible. And indeed, he is the God of the impossible because he has done so much for us. And we are delighted to have with us to speak in for these few nights and also for the past week, Dr. Sean Brooks. Yes, 
we have heard the comments. Yes, we have seen the messages. Yes, we have listened. And we want you to know that Dr. Sean Brooks, the brethren, the people here at Portmore Church, and especially from the members with disability in the possibility ministry, they appreciate what you have done. And we are delighted that you have consented to be our speaker for this campaign. Suffice to say, we are happy that your family could also loan us to you, loan us to us, so that we can share this wonderful engagement. You know, um, it's not easy because your time zone is very different. I know when we come off in the evenings, then your time zone is very different from ours. But we thank you for your time. We thank you for your dedication. And thank you for what you have done. And we want to again say publicly, thank you for everything you have done for us. And thanks to our, thank you to your family for, you know, putting up with you those nights to make sure that you preach the word of God. This morning as we come, we are here to listen again from God's mouthpiece, Dr. Sean Brooks. And his family has joined him this today to celebrate this wonderful occasion. Dr. Sean Brooks, gonna ask you to greet the brethren after we would have I would have left the stage here and just after we would have also received the song of meditation from the Deaf Church Choir. And after that, then it will be Dr. Sean Brooks. His family will also be with him sharing an engagement and we trust and hope that you will continue to inspire and bless others as God bless you. Thank you again, Dr. Sean Brooks. And it's over now to the Deaf church choir thank you well as the choir comes on I'm, I'm hoping I got the instructions correctly but I just want to say thank you to Pastor Morgan for uh, allowing me to come and Pastor Barnaby for allowing me to come and minister to the Portmore Church today. We are blessed. And before I go into the other aspects of greeting and thank yous, I'll allow the group to come, but I just want to say a special thank you to my wife who is joining me today. She's the reason <laughs> I'm able to, to, to preach with power. <laughs> she's, she's the apple of my eyes, and she's right behind me in everything I do. And I just want to say a special thank you for her ministry. I appreciate you, honey, and I thank you for your support. And I believe the saints at Portmore truly enjoy and love you. May God continue to bless and keep you safe. Just before the deaf choir, just want to say, Dr. Brooks, we heard you loud and clear. I <laughs> just wanted him to know that we were listening. Thank you very much. We did appreciate that. Thank you to you and your wife. God bless. Dr. Brooks, we heard you loud and clear. just wanted him to know that we... Years I spent in vanity and pride. 
Amen. Praise be the Lord. We are here to rejoice. We're here to give God the glory and the praise. I just want to say thank you to the members of the Port Moore Deaf Church. Hearing a little feedback. Just want to ensure that you're okay. <laughs> All right, so I just want to say, uh, okay. All right. Can, okay, just want to make sure, can you hear me correctly, clearly? All right, so I'm thinking that helps with the feedback there. Um, again, just want to say thank you to the Portmore Deaf Church community for that beautiful song, for lifting up our Lord and Savior, reminding us of Calvary. Uh, thank you for the participants in this midday service uh, from 
uh, Sister Carr, who gave our welcome, and Pastor Barnaby, uh, to Brother Dun Duncan uh, for our song service, um, uh, for prayer, Kahim Reese, uh, for the children's story, Sister Eileen Francis, and Ashanti, Ashanti Knight for our offering. Uh, we have been blessed night after night, um, and we have been blessed each day as well as we have come to worship our Lord and Savior. Uh, we have come to the end of this series, but a dawn for a new day as it pertains to Possibilities Ministries. And I want to share with you that I have grown this week, not in height, but in wisdom and appreciation of you, the saints of Portmore, and all that God has accomplished. And so we have learned that there is really no us versus them. We're all one in the body of Christ. And as each person works together, we will do our part in hastening the coming of our Lord. So there are a number of individuals that I must thank who made this series possible, starting with pastors Kevon Barnaby and Pastor Kanil Morgan, alongside Pastor Haron Guthrie. Uh, these men were exceptional during the course of this week. And Pastor Barnaby, my good friend, is someone whom I spoke to about March or April. And I said, Pastor Barnaby, I'd, I'd love to do something uh, with your church for the, for the Possibilities Ministries. And Pastor Barnaby said, it is done. Consider it done. <laughs> and you, saints of God, know Pastor Barnaby that when he puts his mind to something, it will be done. And so I appreciate your leadership, Pastor Barnaby, and I appreciate Pastor uh, Morgan's leadership, a visionary leader, as he's working with the deaf community. And I must say that I've been impressed watching him uh, night after night. And I took just a little sign language. I, I did some sign language at NCU, registered for the class. I have a book with me right now. So I'm going to go back and study. I may register, but I appreciate your gift. And I want to ensure that I can communicate effectively to such a beautiful community. Now, I also know that beside these men are some wonderful ladies. And I just want to say thank you to Sister Jessica Barnaby and Sister Charlotte Morgan for all that they do, for their effort in supporting their husbands. Because if you enjoy what they're doing, believe me, uh, their wives played an integral role in their ministry and to their ministry. Uh, Pastor Guthrie, I appreciate you. One day I hope to have an opportunity to have a, a good conversation with you. And I pray that you will enjoy your ministry time at Portmore. Now, there's a team that I often overlooked night after night. And I must uh, just acknowledge the tech team. Uh, Brother Andre Bennett and Brother Sean Williams, alongside everyone who works with them, uh, they have been doing a wonderful job night after night. And I know it takes a tremendous amount to keep things running smoothly. And they've been doing a great job. Uh, Sister Kerr, thank you. Uh, as being our host each week, you have come and you gave a bright smile. You just, you just made heaven come down on earth for us. And we appreciate that. Uh, Brother Lennox Duncan and Brother Roberts, they were singing night after night and they enrich our spirits. And all the nightly featured presentations and presenters, I just wanna say thank you for being there. Our meditation songs, our singers, thank you for participating. Our sign language interpreters, uh, Pastor Morgan, Sister Nicola Brown, Brother Wilbert Johnson, uh, Sister Marvisha Chin, thank you for, again, helping us to communicate the love of God night after night. Sister Francis, the Possibilities Ministries Leader, uh, thank you for all that you have been doing and what you will continue to do. I enjoyed your presentation today. Um, it was plain, it was frank, and it came to the heart. And I pray that you, each person will hear those words and will be inclusive of each person or church. Uh, Elder McLeish, um, 
thank you. Uh, you're the elder for the Deaf Ministries, as well as you're helping with the union right now in the Possibilities Ministries. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your effort, and we appreciate you. Um, Brother Anthony Myers, Bible instructor, as well as Sister Maestra Robinson, the Bible instructor for the Deaf Church, keep up the great work. We have today, after this message, uh, two souls from the Deaf Church who will be baptized, and we have others who will be baptized next week. They had some difficulty for this Sabbath, and that's from the Deaf community. Saints of God, this is a time for rejoicing. This is a time to give God the glory and the praise. And though I cannot see you as I would like to right now, believe me, I am rejoicing with you. And I did mention my wife, and I was very serious when I said that if it were not for her, I would not be able to proclaim the word with power. I would not be able to share on the possibilities ministries because our ministry is interwoven. And all that we have experienced together has allowed this to be possible. Obviously, God is in the background. God is the Alpha and the Omega of all that is done and said here. And I just want to also say a big thank you to my Lord and Savior who saw some possibilities in me and is using me to glorify his name. And I just pray that I will continue to do so. So thank you for all my prayer warriors. You know the prayer ministry team. I've, I've acknowledged you night after night. Thank you for your prayers and for the members at All Nations Church who are praying for me as well and given that support. I appreciate you. Uh, let us pray and ask for God's richest blessings even now. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. And even now, Lord, as we open your word, as we look at what you have in store for this planet of possibilities, Lord, we pray that you'll speak to and through me and allow, Lord, that your church will never be the same as your word goes forth with power and clarity. In Christ's name, amen. So today we're looking at the topic, the planet of possibilities, the planet of possibilities. Um, I will not watch the clock today. I will just preach as the spirit bids me. Uh, and I do pray and hope that you will find great delight in the word of God. <laughs> I will be merciful, don't worry. <laughs> now, to our known calculations, there are over 100 to 200 billion galaxies. To put that into context, presently we are inhabiting the Milky Way galaxy. This is one galaxy amidst 100 to 200 billion other galaxies. And within the Milky Way galaxy, if you enjoy our sunlight, if you enjoy the rays from our sun, our sun makes up just one of 100 billion to 400 billion suns in the Milky Way galaxy. I did not mention the other galaxies out there. So, our sun is neither the largest or smallest sun. And that should give you a picture that we are very small. We are tiny. <laughs> we are a dot in this grand universe. Yet God loves us. He has and continues to bless us. We are trying, saints, to fathom the mind of God. You see, this God knows when a sparrow falls. He knows how much hair you have on your head. He knows how much hair I have on my head, but I may not be a good example, as you can see. So what boggles our mind as complex is rather simple before God. In Genesis 1 and 2, we get a glimpse of our creative wonder-working power or the creative wonder-working power of God. 
You see, all three persons of the Godhead participated in shaping and bringing all that we see around us together. We see that God fashioned Adam and Eve in perfect form and symmetry. They were created without blemish, as the earth was created without blemish. God built and fashioned them out of love, even getting his hands soiled as he molded humanity into his image. There was perfect communion and harmony between God and humanity. There was no disruption in frequency. Psalms 19 and verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day and night unto night, the heavens reveal the glory of God. Adam and Eve were able to understand more about God as they looked at nature all around. There was perfect harmony in that communication as they saw nature and they saw the power of God all around them. I wish the story ended here. I wish the story ended in such a way that we could say they lived happily ever after. But sadly, we come to chapter 3, and there we see the fall of humanity. Now, I won't go into great details today, but I just want you to know that God gave that first peer a choice. You see, Adam and Eve did not have a choice in their creation. They did not have a choice in being placed in the garden. So God gave them a choice and basically said, if you want to remain, if you enjoy the fellowship that we have, if you enjoy everything I have provided for you, please abide by this. And we know the instruction was not to eat of the fruit, of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. But we also know that Adam and Eve sinned and were deceived by Satan. And they exchanged that garden. They exchanged life abundant with God. They exchanged guilt-free living with a fruit. And they realized quickly that five minutes of pleasure can last a lifetime of misery. Sin marred the connection between God and humanity. God tried to come and speak to them, and they all of a sudden began to run from him. Sin made them act a bit silly, because how can you run from God? Where can you run to? But sin does that to us. We act foolish. Sin disrupted the transmission. So God gave a plan in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 that says, My son will come one day and will be bruised, will be hurt by Satan. But one day my son will come and crush Satan's head, will destroy him forever. And I will restore you guys to what you have lost. Though the plan of salvation was already in motion, the results of the fall were clearly and quickly seen. Nature became hostile. Humanity became a terror to themselves. And the relationship between heaven and earth was strained and broken. The fall affected us in four primary ways. And I'm going to share these ways with you, but let me just say that these are the same definitions. These are the same conditions that affects those with special needs. So hear me out, saints of God. It is said that um, the special need is often used to describe individuals who may require assistance due to physical, developmental, 
behavioral and emotional conditions. I propose to you today, saints, that because of our fall in the garden, we have all been affected in these four categories. Physically, we are no longer the same. Adam and Eve may have been giants in the garden with the freshness of vigor, even though Adam sinned and would eventually die. The organic juice of God's fresh creative power kept him going until he was 930 years old. Genesis 5 and verse 5. Today, if we live to be 70, we are grateful. And by reason of strength, if we live even to be a hundred, we consider ourselves ultimately fortunate. Saints of God, we have fallen physically from where we were in the garden. Developmentally, David says in Psalms 51 and verse 5, that we are born and shapen in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. So all of us have been born and shapen in sin as we develop from day to day. We are only displaying sinful tendencies and sinful practices. Behaviorally, all you have to do, saints, is look at our history. Cain killed his brother Abel, and there have been countless wars. We are aggressive towards one another. In fact, you know, one of our favorite pets or animals would be a dog. I love dogs. And I recall some of the dogs I've had when I would place the bowl of food beside them, I basically had about two seconds in which to withdraw my hand. Because if my hand stayed at their mouth with the food for too long, the dog would stop eating and look at my hand and growl, basically saying, you best, sir, you better move your hand. I don't care if you are my master. That bowl belongs to me. Jesus said, I will come to this earth and I will help these people. I will seek to bless them. I am their Lord. And yet still, figuratively, we bit after our Lord. We hurt him because it is in our nature to hurt. Emotionally, we are unstable. One minute we can sing, Hosanna! And the next minute we cry, crucify him. Saints of God, look around. Look around this planet. This planet is the only planet in the universe filled with disabilities. The only planet of special needs. The only planet that we can consider possibilities or within the possibilities ministries. Everyone has fallen and come short. Today we categorize individuals and say, this person has a special need and that person has a disability. The truth of the matter, friends, all of us, all of us are in the same category. Get it in your head. To break it down, I borrow, or to break it down to you, I borrow uh, from the title of Stephanie uh, Hubeck's book, Same Lake, Different Boat. Same Lake, Different Boat. She says, we are all in the same lake. And I want you to understand that. This planet, planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy has been affected by sin. We are experiencing the same storm of sin but we ride it out in different boats, in different vessels. The same way that COVID-19 has affected us all around the world. Each country is affected. Each country handles it differently. 
So when you look at your brother and you look at your sister and you say that person has this disability, that person has that special need, and you're thinking you're okay, I remind you, you're in the same lake. You're in the same world of sin. And just wait long enough, as Sister Francis said, just wait long enough and you will know what a disability or what disability is all about. Saints of God, in that book, she goes on to say that disability is a normal part of life in an abnormal world. Hear me out. Disability is a normal part of life in an abnormal world. You see, it is normal in this world uh, for a child to be born with developmental disabilities. It is normal in this world for a child to have uh, Asperger. It is normal in this world for a child to have autism. It is normal in this world for a person to develop cancer, diabetes, dementia, paralysis. It is normal in this world for you to go out in this world and meet in an accident. It is normal in this world for you to grow old and eventually die. What would be abnormal in this world is if you live to be uh, 200 years old. And if you go out from birth till now and there's not a single scar on your body, that would be abnormal. So again, when individuals may struggle with some disabilities, understand it is a normal part of life in an abnormal world. It was not God's plan. It was not God's plan for nature to be so violent towards us. It was not God's plan for ourselves to fight each other like cancer. It was not God's plan. This is because of sin. An enemy has done this. Heaven saw our condition. And God looked at planet Earth knowing that the connection was broken, knowing that there was no way for us to really understand him properly. Nature spoke about his goodness, but yet in nature you see all these creatures eating each other. In nature you see hurricanes coming and destroying so much land. And we would say, Truly, this cannot be a loving God. So God says, I need another way to communicate to them how much we love them and how much my son will eventually do for them. So God gave us the sanctuary message. God told Moses to build what I give you, a, a blueprint as you see in vision. I want you to make it here. And in the wilderness, Moses, as you read Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers, Moses was able to build that earthly tabernacle, that sanctuary. And now I want to share with you just how much God wanted to communicate with us. Just how much God wanted to reach every soul with disability or without. God was looking to reach all of us. God understood that there are four basic learning groups. Four. There are people who are tactile or kinesthetic learners. These are people who need to touch things. So God says, I am going to allow you to touch the dove, the lamb, and the bull. And as you handle these animals, and as you see these animals take their last breath, you will understand a little bit about what my son will go through. 
for the visual learners, those who need to see with their eyes. God says, I will put colors in the sanctuary, purple, blue, and scarlet. I will ensure that they can see the curtains that are separating the compartments, and that will tell them that my son will have different phases in his ministry. For the auditory listeners, God displayed his lessons through the loud blast of the trumpeters, the, the, the worship of the musicians and the singers, and he also allowed them to hear the noisy animals as they were led to the sacrifice. And this would draw emotions because people would know that they should have been the one being led to the slaughter, save for Jesus Christ. For those who learn by reading and writing, God said, I will write my law down. I will allow Moses to write the first five books of the law, which is the Torah. I will allow that the 12 tribes of Israel are engraved on 12 precious stones that the priests will wear. They can read it for themselves. They will then know that their, they, their names are engraved upon the heart of Jesus Christ. And even for those like with developmental disabilities as autism and Asperger's, it is said that several of these individuals have a, a, a leaning towards mathematical connections. So God says, for those who are tickled uh, by details, I am going to put intricate details in making the sanctuary. That should provoke their mind. And I'm going to sprinkle some prophecy in there as Daniel gives us prophecies that expand when Jesus would come. And that's in the backdrop of the sanctuary message. So God says, I am reaching those minds who love the maths, who loves the details of prophecy. There are those individuals who love fellowship. They love to come to church. They love to walk with the saints. And God says, I will give them feasts and festivals. I will give them the Passover, which is why when Mary and Joseph were going to Jerusalem, they enjoyed the fellowship so much, they forgot Jesus behind. And then there are individuals who, who prefer to, to remain alone. They are solitary. And God says, that's okay. You can still participate in the Passover. You can still celebrate the Hebrew festal days. And for those who physically, literally cannot make it, like Daniel and the Hebrews, they could not go to Jerusalem while in Babylon. God said, it's okay. You can simply turn to the temple and pray to me. You don't even need Zoom. You don't even need Wi-Fi. You can pray. I will pick up the connection wherever you may be. Mm. I'm getting excited saying, sorry, I'm getting excited. I feel like running, I feel like skipping, because my God is so good. Woo! You see, saints, God desired to reach every worshiper, whatever their learning styles, whatever their condition, whatever their place in life, he was making provisions for them. God was saying, if you are blind, I can reach you. If you are deaf, I can reach you. If you cannot walk, I can reach you. If you are near, I can reach you. If you are far, I can reach you. I want you to know how much I love you and how much my son will do for you. And yet still, even though the sanctuary message was pretty clear, it was not clear enough for some people because by the time we come to the New Testament, we see people who were just offering rams and goats to God, thinking that they could appease an angry God. 
They completely miss the reason for the sacrifices. And they thought now that because I gave this sacrifice, I am better than my brother. I am better than my sister. They missed it all. So God said, I need them to understand how much heaven loves them. And God said, I need an interpreter. This is where Ellen G. White in the book, Education, page 100, says that mankind still needed an interpreter. This was where Jesus came in the picture. This was where the great master teacher said, I will come and I will help them to understand between the connection of nature and God. I will come and help them to see that I am the Lamb of God in the sanctuary message. I will come and help them to understand that God so loved the world that he gave me to die for them, that they will not be lost. I will come and interpret for them. Mm. When Jesus came on this earth, John, the beloved disciple, was so excited about Jesus. He was so excited about Jesus that he says this of Christ, 1 John 1. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we heard him for ourselves. He's a master teacher, I told you. He's a master interpreter, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled him, just like the lamb in the Old Testament, just like the lamb in the sanctuary. We have handled him concerning the word of life. Not only do we have the scripture, but guess what? We have the word come in the flesh. And he says the life was manifested. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested to us. And Jesus, the master interpreter, was saying to them, are you seeing clearly now who I am and who I'm representing? And one of the disciples, Philip, said no in John chapter 14, 7 to 11. Philip said, no, Lord, we, we don't see that connection clearly. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, Philip, you have seen the Father also. The words I speak unto you, I speak because he sent me. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. I am trying to communicate the love of the Father to you. Jesus' instructions were clear and simple. Even a little child could understand the parables of Jesus and make the eternal connection to our Heavenly Father. But in order for Jesus to come, and be our interpreter. There are some things he had to do. And let me just say this and ask this question, saints. If, or let me just ask, would you be willing for a doctor to come and do surgery on your spine? Would you be willing for a doctor after they are finished to leave you paralyzed and disabled? Would you appreciate that? For many of us, we'd say no. But what if the doctor would do this so that you could reach others who are likewise disabled? Would you do it? Maybe one or two hands may go up. But the truth of the matter is, another hand will go up and say, okay, if I get the surgery after I have done my part, will you put my back together again, <laughs> my spine together again, so that I can walk again? And if I said no, I'm sure those hands would start to drop. You see, the father had a conversation with Jesus. And the father said, Jesus, you know, if you go, if you go to planet Earth, if you occupy the body, the Holy Ghost will prepare for you. If you go, you're going to lose some of your powers. 
You're going to lose the gift of omnipresence where you won't be able to be everywhere at the same time. You will be confined to this body. Jesus said, it's okay, Father. I will go. Son, there will be limitations if you go. You're going to have to suffer like they suffer. And in fact, I'm going to send you amidst wolves. They will even bite you. Let me just say figuratively, they will hurt you. And you're going to have to live with the scars. And Jesus says, it's okay. I want my body to tell a story. I will use my body as sign language. I will use my body to interpret for them, how much heaven loves them. So Jesus came to this earth and decided to go to Golgotha in his body. One writer, speaking of those in the disabled community, sees their bodies as bodies of knowledge because each person has a body of knowledge. It tells a story. If you sit and inquire, you will learn about their story. You will learn about what they have gone through. So Jesus came with his body of knowledge, his body of love, and he came to Golgotha. And with every strike of the whip, with every strike of that Roman whip, his back was being lacerated. They said they put bones at the end of the whip. And as the bones would hit the skin, it would scrape off portions of flesh. And it was tearing off flesh on the body of knowledge, this body of love. When they pressed the thorny crown upon his head, those thorns pierced his temple, leaving permanent scars on his body of knowledge. When they took those rusty nails and drove them into his feet and hands, they left gruesome scars and gaps in his body of knowledge. When they pierced his side with the spear, it left a ragged mark on his body of knowledge. Yet Jesus braved it all so that humanity could have another chance, so that humanity could have another choice. But I want to bring you into something else. As Jesus hung on that cross, growing, going through great humiliation, the angels in heaven and the unfallen beings, because I believe that there are other unfallen beings out there. The angels and the unfallen beings closed their eyes. They couldn't take the scene of the Son of God going through all of this and the scars on his body. They closed their eyes. And some may have asked the question, why, Father, why, Heavenly Father, are you allowing your Son to go through hell? Why are you allowing them to rip his hands and his feet? Why, God? Why are you spending so much time on this fallen planet? We did not fall. They fell. They invited this thing upon themselves. Why are you going out of the way for them? Jesus was able to help these angels. He was able to help those unfallen beings as he also helped us by telling us the story of the prodigal son. But hear me out, it should not be the prodigal son. It really ought to be the prodigal father. 
because the word prodigal means someone who is generous in giving, someone who basically is lavish in the way they give their gifts. And so Jesus was saying there is a prodigal father, and this prodigal father was confronted by the older boy and the older boy said we were not the ones i was not the one who sinned i did not drop and mess myself up developmentally and emotionally i did not mess up myself with liquor and all those things and messed up my internal parts physically i did not do that so tell me something father why are you sacrificing the fatted calf for him? Tell us something, Father. Why did you allow Jesus to be sacrificed for them? And the earthly father looked at the son and said, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have belongs to you. The earth, the heavenly father looked at the unfallen beings and said, listen to me, you guys, yes, you're correct. You did not sin. You're always with me. All that I have, all the galaxies around, everything I have built, it belongs to you. But this young man, this boy, these individuals are those individuals on that planet. They were lost. The planet was lost. But now, because of Jesus, they are saved. Won't you rejoice with me? And God the Father says, listen, let me tell you that there is more. When I tell my son to go back to planet earth and collect my people they're gonna come back to heaven and for a thousand years we're going to have a grand celebration for a thousand years we're going to have a catawampus party for them i am going to go all out i will be the prodigal heavenly father i will lavish them with gifts i will lavish them with praise i will give them of my best i am going all out for them in heaven but i'm not finished the father would say to them pack your bags what do you mean father what do you mean Father said, there's something else I must do. After that 1,000 years celebrating here in heaven, I am going to pack my suitcases and I am going to move heaven's headquarters to planet Earth. I am going to move heaven's headquarters to that planet of disabilities, that planet of special needs, that planet of possibilities. I am moving and you better pack your bags as well because you're moving with me. Do you know, saints, what that means? That means that all the angels in heaven will have to pass by planet Earth. It means that the unfallen beings out there will have to come by planet Earth in order to touch and correspond with Jesus Christ. The planet that has the most problems, the planet that gave the greatest challenges, the planet that cost the sun his life will be the planet that God will dwell upon. But I like this, saints. John the Revelator. John the Revelator says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. 
after God takes care of sin and sinners and there is no more Satan, God will recreate the earth. God will ensure, please listen to me now, God will ensure that the earth is accessible for us. I could jump and I could shout right now. God will ensure that the earth is accessible for us. God will ensure that there are no more thorns to pierce our feet. God will ensure that there are no ill-tempered animals to bite and eat us. God will ensure that no longer will the sun burn us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, will light the world. God will ensure that his citizens can move freely without fear of thieves and bandits for sin and sinners will be no more and saints of god i have good news for you because worldwide we're going through something and so guess what one day when god recreates this earth and makes it accessible there will be no more need for masks there'll be no more need for gloves for there will be no more covid no more diseases and no more ventilators because god would have sanitized the universe god said before i come i gotta spray this place out before i come i gotta clean this place so that it can be accessible for my children mm. praise be to god But saints of God, as I close, not only will there be no more dying, no more sorrow, and no more crying, but sin will not raise itself a second time. We have been through so much, and it started with a bad choice. So God, how is it that sin will not arise a second time? And we understand, saints, that, that when Jesus comes, we shall be transformed. This mortal that is decaying in front of us, this body of death will be no more. We will have a new body transformed by the power of God. No more sickness, no more death. We understand that. But what about the choice? Saints of God, hear me out. Jesus came as the ultimate interpreter. His body became a body of knowledge. When he goes to heaven, and as he's there right now, he still maintains certain scars from his time. You see, saints, when we look at his hands and his feet, we will remember that we pierce them. When we look at his head and the lacerations there, we will remember what he went through for us. When we touch his side while we're in heaven and we put our hand like Thomas did and touch his side and our hand sink into his side and we feel that scar from the spear, we will remember that Jesus died of a broken heart. And we will remember how much the Father went through for us to send his son to die for us so for time and eternity the body of jesus will be a source of knowledge for his people for we will continually be looking at jesus and remembering what we came out of and because we're looking at jesus sin will have no place in our mind. Sin will have no place in our heart because our Lord and our Savior is our faithful and great high priest forever. Maybe this is why Isaiah declares 
in chapter 53 and verse 5, that by his stripes, by the wounds on his body of knowledge, we are healed. We are healed from the appetite of sin. We are healed from the passion of sin. We are healed from the memory of sin. We are healed from our love of fear with Satan. We are healed from all those foolishness in our lives when we see his body of knowledge. And the great high priest will be our teacher for eternity. Saints of God, I can't wait to get to heaven. But until we do, God has a few things for us to do. And one of that, which is the most important, is that we love one another. While here on earth, though we are on the same lake, this world affected by sin, we are in different boats, we are in different vessels, and there are some individuals how, who have greater challenges than others. And what makes it harder for them is that they're often laughed at and they're ignored by so many. But God is watching how we treat the possibility community, members of the disabled and special needs community. God is watching how we treat their bodies because their bodies are bodies of knowledge. Their bodies are bodies of love because they're made in the image of God. And so, hear me out. If you laugh at those with disabilities, tell me something. If you laugh at their externals, if you laugh at their developmental challenges, if you laugh at them in this life, when... And I should say, if you get to heaven, what would prevent you from laughing at Jesus when you see all the scars on his forehead, when you see all the scars in his hand, when he removes his robe and you see the scars on his back, what will prevent you from laughing? So Jesus says, if you laugh at those whom you can see, if you hate those whom you can see, how do you think you can love me when you can't even see me yet? Saints, if you want, if you want to see the face of Jesus, you've got to learn to look upon individuals here and treat them as you would Jesus Christ. Treat those with special needs as you would Jesus Christ. Treat those in the possibilities, ministries, community as you would Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, what you have done to the least of these, you have done so unto me. You know, when we get to heaven, the angels who may have asked, why is God going all out for them? Why did God send the Son to them? Why did God send the Holy Spirit to them, as John 14 tells us? Why would God send angels as ministering spirits to them, there are better things to do in the universe. God will have a mission for us. Our job will be to go to all these unfallen beings, all these places, and to speak to the angels about something that they have no knowledge of. They will fold their wings when they hear redemption's story from our lips, because you see, they have not been through what we have been through. They have not seen the pain that we have seen. They have not experienced it in our bodies of knowledge. 
And so throughout eternity, we will be speaking about the love that Jesus communicated to us on that cross. We will explain to them how compassionate Jesus is, how loving the Father is, and the angels will now understand by and by how good the Father is, how loving and kind Jesus is. We have a mission in heaven. I pray that you will make it in the kingdom of heaven. I pray with all my heart that as Jesus has given you and I a choice, we will make the best use of that choice. Don't be like Adam and Eve who gave up the garden for a fruit. Please, Jesus has paid a high price that you can have the same choice that Adam and Eve had. You have the choice to have eternal life with Jesus. Or you can choose to be cut off for eternity and for you to be presented with that choice, for myself to be presented with that choice. Jesus had to die. Don't let his death go in vain. Why don't you identify with someone who chose to identify with you? Today, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want to say, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief, the decision is yours to ask Jesus into your life right now. You can be transformed in a moment if you say, Jesus, come into my heart right now, Lord. I need you if it is your desire. My brothers and sisters, you can write it down right now in the chat. You can even call in to the programs. You can connect with Pastor Barnab. You can connect with Pastor Morgan. Or you can connect with a neighboring church around you. There are many Seventh-day Adventist churches around. But connect with the God of possibilities. Today we have a baptism. We have two precious souls in the deaf community have said right with God and they are giving off their best to Jesus and I believe today saints that heaven is celebrating Jesus has reached them the great interpreter Jesus Christ has reached them but I believe that the great interpreter wants to reach more and he will use every means to reach you if you want to be a part of that number we have a baptism coming next week sabbath as well i want you to be a part of that number i was baptized at the tender age of eight but at eight years old as i stood at fletcher's beach at eight years old under that tent i knew that i wanted to live with jesus the message was simple enough i had a choice to make jesus or the devil i didn't want the devil i don't want to suffer with him i don't want to die with him i want to live with jesus eight years old and I've not looked back. Young people, God wants to use you at a young age. And if you're like the thief on the cross, if you're about to die, God still wants to use you. And in your old age, God wants to use you. And he gives you a choice. What choice will you make today? I will pray quickly and allow the pastors to transition. But let me pray for you right now. As you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as you sign up for prayer, as you commit your heart to him, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that we've had 
over the course of this week to lift your name on high. Thank you, Lord, for coming to this planet of possibilities. Thank you, Lord, for investing so much in us. As a church, sometimes we look at our budget and say, we don't have any money for the Possibilities Ministries team. But heaven looked and said, what else can we not spare? What else must be given? We must empty heaven to help those on that planet of possibilities. I will send my son to them. I will send my spirit to them. I will send my angels to them. Heaven has invested everything in us. So how much more should we invest in those around us with disabilities? How much more should we love those who have special needs? Yes, Lord, we understand too that all of us have disabilities. All of us are on the same lake. But each person carries a different vessel. Help us, Lord, to be compassionate to each other. Help us as a church to include everyone in the programming. Help us to go out of our way to reach them as you did in the Old Testament. And God, when you come again, those names, those individuals who said, please remember me, or Lord, come into my heart. Lord, write their names, even now, in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm just asking a prayer. If you will hear this prayer from this preacher, Lord, send angels, in fact, two angels, to each person now who have given their names up, who have raised their hands, or who have prayed silently, Jesus, I want you in my heart. Jesus, I want to be baptized. Lord, send the angels to strengthen them. Help them to be firm with that decision until the end, because it's the best choice they could have ever made. And I want to say thank you, God, for Portmore Church. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for the members who supported weekly, nightly, Lord. Thank you for, for each and every one of them. And I pray that Portmore will truly be a light in that region. Bless them, Lord. Keep them by your power and your grace. In Christ's name, let the church say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody say amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Surely I was blessed today. What do you say? We want to thank God for having allowed, for having blessed this man's servant with such powerful words. Amen. We want to give God thanks for Dr. Sean Brooks and for him having allowed God to use him in such a powerful way for the past few days we have been blessed by power packed of uh, uh, power packed Bible backed preaching very informative and for those who have uh, loved ones with some sort of disability 
We give God thanks that you have now been informed, your eyes have been opened, am I right? As to how you can show to these individuals love and care and understanding. My, 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 my eyes have been opened and I pledge by God's grace to, to upgrade my attitude towards those who have some sort of disability, amen? Because they too are a part of God's kingdom. I, I was truly blessed and I want to say on behalf of Pastor Morgan, the pastor of the Deaf Church, uh, Pastor Guthrie, our intern pastor, uh, all of the members and officers and of course the Deaf Church, a special thank you to Pastor Brooks and his family, wife Stacy and children for that for these special uh, messages that were delivered. We keep them in our prayers. Won't you say amen? Allow me, brethren, while we allow our two candidates to, uh, to get ready, to get dressed, uh, just to say thanks to all of our participants. I want you to understand that we were very intentional to ensure that most, if not all, of the participants are persons who have some sort of challenge or challenges. Are we together? And we are happy that they delivered. They did very, very well from our whole sister Nadine to, to all to Brother Lennox and Robert. And, and now I'm getting into trouble with calling all these names. But I must say thanks, Brother Delano and all the other participants they have done their role, their task well. And as a result of their ministry, we have come rejoicing this afternoon, bringing in the sheaves, won't you say amen? We must say thanks to all the members of the Possibility Ministries Committee, our Sister Frances, Elder McLeish, Pastor Morgan, and all the other members. We just want to say how much we appreciate your commitment to this very special uh, set of members and, and folks. I'm sure that they too would have experienced uh, something extraordinary, something transformational, and I'm sure that their lives would have been impacted in a very, very positive way. We must say thanks to the tech team, Brother Andre, Brother uh, Sean, and all the others, communication, uh, Sister Abigail, Brother Sam Wayne, and all the other members of the various teams, we just want to say how much we appreciate you for your commitment to this uh, God of the Impossible uh, Evangelistic Series. We are allowing just uh, another few minutes for Pastor Morgan to get dressed and to make his way in the pool. Uh, for baptism. So the baptism will be done right here instead of the sea. And, um, and so in a little while, he will enter the baptistry and we will see the candidates uh, who will in a little while come forward to take their vows. But what a wonderful God. What a wonderful God. I was blessed and we just want to share the good news and by the way while we would have while we would have come to the end of this special series sister francis we want our brothers and sisters our members to still share the the link in the sense that the videos will be on youtube we can share it to families, uh, loved ones who have challenges with uh, coping uh, with individuals with disability. I also want to make a very public announcement, and this, this is a faith pr pronouncement that I will make. We would love to have Dr. Sean Brooks again. Come on, somebody say amen. Uh, we hope the day will come when we will have him live. 
but I want to say, Pastor Sean Brooks, from where I stand and from the responses of all the members, the next time you share in a God of the Impossible Evangelistic Series, uh, it will be to a wider group of individuals than just the Portmore Church. We will make sure that the entire Jamaica uh, participates in such a series which I and you and I would have realized that it is indeed uh, very, very in informative and uh, eye-opening. I was blessed and I'm sure you were too. While we are still waiting patiently, just want to remind the church that we have our Bible class online this evening. We then we will close with our Vespers, but come tomorrow evening, we will join with the Living in the Kingdom uh, revival series with our president, Pastor Levi Johnson. We will also take the feed uh, from the CJC uh, online platform come this Wednesday evening. And of course, we invite all of our viewers, those online, YouTube channel and Facebook to join with us again on Sabbath and so our YouTube channel and our Facebook uh, page will be kept active will be kept active and we would want for you to be a part of us so we invite our members we invite our friends those online to uh, just encourage others to subscribe click that bell subscribe be a part of what we do here at the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. It was a joy having you worshiping with us, and uh, we pray that you will stay uh, with us for the next few minutes as we get ready to, in, to immerse uh, these uh, two candidates in the watery grave of baptism. If those with um, challenges, disability as it were, could have done such a tremendous job it means that those of us who have uh, who are able to do more we ought to do more to build up the kingdom of god won't you say amen and i want to give god thanks for our interpreters could you give them a big amen they have done an exceptional job to make sure that uh, those who are a part of the deaf community could hear and understand the gospel in very clear tones this afternoon we have sylvia beckford and sophia evans both from the trench town community they have decided to accept jesus christ as their personal savior i want to say hallelujah thank you jesus for rescuing sister sylvia and sophia so Sylvia and Sophia, I have three questions that I will ask you. If you plan, if you desire, if you purpose in your hearts to abide by these principles, then I will invite you to raise your right hand so that we can see that you are, you are, are prepared rather to commit. Are you ready? All right, here, here beginneth the first question. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior and Lord? And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Amen. And finally, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ 
to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offerings, and a life of service? Amen. You have seen the response of Sylvia and Sophia as they commit to a life of faithfulness to the church and its mission. May I ask at this time, is there a motion from a member of the church that we accept Sylvia and Sophia as members of this church subject to your baptism? Uh, is there a motion? It is moved. I'm going to ask at this time, is there a second? Is there a second? You would love for them to become members of this church. Amen. It is seconded. All in favor, all who, and by the way, had it not been for COVID, this place would be packed to its capacity. All right? So you would have seen much, many, 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 many more members. But of course, because of COVID, many are online. But let me see the hands of those who are on, in, on the inside. You would love for them to become members of our church. Amen. Praise the Lord. All those, you could turn around and look. Turn around and look. Let me see the hands again. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much, uh, uh, Sophia and Sylvia. At this time, let me invite the congregation to stand as we will pray a very special prayer of blessing on these two. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we are just so happy for the preaching of the gospel. We are thankful, Lord, for the ministry of Dr. Brooks and uh, Sister McLeish and Francis and Morgan and others who would have worked assiduously in preparing these individuals, Lord, to take this very, very important step. We pray now that you will seal your decision, not just for time, but for eternity. I pray, God, that after they would have been immersed in the watery grave of baptism, and as they rise, O oh God, we pray that they will go back to their community in Trenchtown and, and that they will help others who have similar challenges, Lord, to make their minds up for Jesus. We pray that you will bless them, Lord. Watch over them, provide for them in these difficult times. And we pray, Lord, that for those who should have been a part of this experience today, but for whatever reason are missing, we pray that next Sabbath, when the water again will be troubled, that those individuals who are not here will be a part of the rich experience. Bless us all together. As we pray and say thanks in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to ask Brother Lennox to come and, and just guide us in, in the singing of some songs as we prepare to immerse uh, Sylvia and Sophia in the watery grave of baptism. Good afternoon, saints of God. Shall we praise the Lord? We have been having a good time, don't it? Could you give me a G on the piano? Okay. Empty. And broken, I came back to you. A vessel so unworthy, so scarred with sin, but he did not despair. He started over again 
Cause I bless the day He didn't throw the clay away vessel of honor I am today all because Jesus he did throw the clay away he is the body I am the clay molded in God's image. He wants me to stay. But when I stumble and fall and my face of honor I am today all because Jesus he didn't throw the clay away let me talk to the church hold it down take it low Mr. Meditation this morning when I felt the earthquake this earth trimmer. I laid on my bed and I felt when the earth started to dance. I was saying to myself, no man, something wrong because it can't be anything else. And I know it was an earthquake because nothing else can make the earth dance. Because if I drop a tough stone from the earth, yes, it will feel it, but it will not make it And when I'm thinking, that's no, that's how people must turn their life over to God. Because the Bible speaks about these things. Amen. He has warned us over and over, and we refuse to take heed. So God has to do something in order to draw us closer to Him. So all those fandangles that we are always wearing our hair, we need to fling them out, throw them out, because it's God time now. You don't see this pandemic, what you are going through, is a man-made thing. But the Bible also speaks of wickedness in high places. And that is what is going on right now. And even in our church, we have to also care for one another. Do not pass each other by because we, we are the one who are telling people that we are the regnant church. Amen. So now that we are saying that we are the regnant church, we must live that life. Amen. Brothers, thank you so very much, Brother Lennox, for that powerful word, testimony, and charge to the believers. We are happy this afternoon for Sylvia Beckford she has decided to allow Jesus to make 
of her a vessel of honor. And so, Sister Sylvia, because you love God, and because you want to be a part of his eternal kingdom, because you want to be declared a vessel of honor fit for the kingdom, as ministers of the gospel, it is our joy and delight on the profession of your faith to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed and sweet Holy Spirit, let God's people say, Amen. Brother Lennox, it's over to you. Give us another song, please. Shall goodbye heavenly burden. of guilt and shame then the eyes of Jesus Jesus touch me me and all and all that what joy that flows my soul oh, oh, oh. I said something something happened and now I know he touched me from Brother Lennox he touched me and today praise God he you and I me. have been made whole this afternoon we're happy for Sister Sophia Evans she said I have experienced the touch and because I've experienced the touch I want to go all the way with my Jesus in the water and grave of baptism and so Sister Sophia Evans, because you love Jesus and because you want to be a part of God's eternal kingdom, because you want to be in the number when the saints go marching home as ministers of the gospel upon the profession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed and sweet Holy Spirit. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. 
as we close this beautiful service, we just want to remind you that we are here. We are here for you as pastors, as leaders, as members of the church. Perhaps you're watching online and you're saying, Pastor, I too would like to make that decision because I know that I can do without a lot of things, but I can't get to heaven without Jesus. And so if that is your desire, please feel free to reach out to us. You will see the numbers uh, online on the screen where you can connect with us. Reach out to us and we will definitely be more than happy to reach out to you and to prepare you uh, for this very, very special uh, decision, which is to turn it all over to Jesus. Again, I uh, want to say thanks to all our viewers for being so patient, all of our worshipers, our visitors who stayed with us from the start of the service until now. It was just so good to be in the presence of God. Thanks again to Dr. Brooks and to all the team members. May the Lord continue to bless us soon and very soon. We will have, there will be no need for any possibility ministries because the Bible reminds us that we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed from mortal to immortality. May God continue to bless us. See you this afternoon. I believe we have cure time at 3 o'clock. And so members of the church, oh, no cure time this evening. All right. But we will definitely join for Bible class and also for Vespers service. God bless you. And we're going to ask Brother Lennox to take us out with his final song. While the musician is finding that very special note on the keyboard, let me just invite us to bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this rich worship experience here at the Portmore Church. Thank you for every worshiper who joined with us, be it in the physical space or online. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to upgrade us, that you will continue to transform our lives. May we be more and more like Jesus. And we pray that when you come, Lord, that all of us, all of us, every one of us, will be waiting, ready, and waiting to go home and live with you eternally. Thanks again for all of our members of the deaf church and those uh, of the deaf community. We pray that you will continue to Bless them, and may you continue to use us to bless them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Brother Lennox. Um, good afternoon again, saints of God. Um, I'm going to be taking you back in time, I don't know. Um, if you know this song, I know some of you would know it, some of you young people would know this. In shady green pastures so rich and so sweet God lead is their children alone where the cool waters flow there's a well well, one peace, God lead is the children alone. Oh, some, some to the one.
day long. You know what? You know what, church? Sometimes on the mount where the sun shining so bright, God lead is the children alone, and sometimes in the valley. With the darkest, darkest of night, God lead is their children alone. Oh, some, some to the one. Be anything God wants me to be. 